so that's what she looks like finished. Now I'll show you how I build this next one on the house here. But first I guess I'll show you how I built this one. What a mess. Down the side of the house here is where I sort of store timber and scaffolding and uh, old stainless steel tubs by the looks and any old shit that I just sort of don't know what to do with or is in the process of waiting to be used. So my wife hates it. Because she hates it, I am going to build a screen to block it all off. Now it kind of needs to be a screen that I can open. And what I'm going to do is build a screen out to the edge of this bin here, be in line with this bin, to the corner of this bin, to the fence. And I will also put a short bit of wall here. This bit will be stationary, just to block any view from an angle. Whereas this wall, it's going to be about two meters long, two meters high, will be on hinges and be able to be opened out so that I can get shit in and out of here. I have tidied it up several times, many times over the years, but it just keeps looking like shit again very quick. Because I'm not all that tidy. And there's always crap to be stored somewhere. So I'm going to build that now. Now I need something fairly hefty for the post. Um, and I, haven't, I, I like to use shit that's laying around. I like to take things that are laying around and make them look shit hot. Even though they're bits of crap. So I am going to... I wanted a steel post. Because I'm going to have a hardwood screen. And I need a steel post to take the weight of the hardwood screen. It's going to be pretty bloody heavy. I mean, I will have a wheel on the bottom of it so that it will roll around when I swing it out and give it some support at this end. But I still want something fairly solid. But I want it to look like timber. I didn't have any nice big timber posts. I could laminate a sort of post together. But then I thought, why not use this? I know it's not meant to be used outdoors, but it's been outdoors for years, is isn't really rusted yet, so I'm going to use that and encase it in hardwood. I haven't decided what timber I'm going to use yet. I've got a lot of hardwood around at the moment, so I've got some Quila, some Aqua, some Selina, some Vitex. There'll be a Vitex used somewhere in the... I don't know whether I'll mix up the hardwoods or whether I'll just use one, I don't know. Anyway, this is about 2800 long and I need it to be about 2 metres long, so I'm going to cut that down. I'm going to cut it so that it's sort of there and there, so that I might be able to use these end pieces with the brackets on at some point for something else. <laughs> um, so I'll cut that now and get started. So I'm using my cold cutting saw here, battery saw. Blade's getting a bit chewed up, a bit munted, but hopefully she's still got the guts. Just that blade needs changing. Right, I've got my three holes marked here. I'm going to be attaching it to the concrete wall at the bottom with these screws. They are 10, they require a 10mm concrete bit, but they've got a 12mm thread on them. So I need a 12mm hole and a 10mm hole in the concrete. To get it lined up on both sides, I'm drilling this long 3.5 millimeter bit and then I'm gonna drill from each side with the step drill to 12 mil. So 
So she's all vertical and level. Ooh. Drop the screw. Um, now drill some holes, put some bolts in. I've kept the base two inches off the ground, about 50 mil, just so that water and rubbish and stuff can be swept underneath it. A lot of water runs along there when it buckets down with rain, and lots of leaves and shit build up, so it's just so I can clean it easily. So I've looked through my timber, and Vitex is the choice I'm going to use. This timber is close to the right size. I just need to cut off one of these shiplap lips. And then the width from here to here will be good. Here's one that I've just ripped the edge off. This is a test. So essentially, it will go on here, nicely, like so. A little, bit, a little bit of a gap away from the fence. And another board will screw along the front. Let's have stuck the side ones on. So I'll rip a couple of these and put them on. I'm going to cut out around those blocks at the bottom. sit on there like that and I'll tap a couple of screws into the steel and just they won't need many probably four maybe five screws up there and then on this side it might be a bit trickier I think I might put the hinges on here first now I have my timber in place, ready to screw on to my steel post. I've cut it about one thickness of the timber, 20 mil, from the top, so I can put a cap on there. And I've put a packer under here, just so that this bit of timber isn't sitting on the wall, so when it's wet after rain, it doesn't suck it all up in the timber and rot it out too quick. So I'm going to drill and tap holes in here um, with, what, six mil probably? screws, bolts, into my piece of steel. Low gear. When you feel it catch, back it off a few times. You don't want to snap this off in there. It's just caught the metal now. Feel it catch, make sure you back it off because you'll snap the bugger.
so I've decided what I'm going to use for my screen. I'm going to use Vitex, it's a hardwood from Solomon Islands. Shiplap profile, but I'm going to cut off the shiplap bits. So this will be about 90 mil um, of usable timber, and I'm also going to use this Aqua, also from the Solomon Islands, about AKWA tongue and groove flooring profile there. I'm going to cut off the tongue and groove bits. Um, it's got the the rebates in the back there, but that's going to be on the side of the screen there. Only I will ever see, so it doesn't really matter. Um, this I can do up to about 110 wide, so I'm just trying to decide if I do it all 90 wide, or I do these 90 and these about 110. Don't know, should probably do it all 90. Well, anyway, I'm going to start cutting. So I've set up my saw in a way that's bound to get some negative comments in the comment section below. But I only want to... Like, the way I've done it is I've got this set up so it'll cut 22 mil off. And that way I can stick the board through and it'll take off one tongue and groove. And then I can flip it over, flip, spin it around and take off the other tongue and groove, end up with the board the width I want. I've got it to 95 mils while I'm doing them. So ideally you shouldn't use your table saw like this. You should have the bigger side on this side, ideally. Um, just less chance of kickback. Um, and I would normally have the bigger side on this side, but this way I don't have to shift this over and over again, or cut all the boards on one side, pick them all up again, change this and cut them all on the other side. I want to just do it all in the one whack. And then I have just been doing a few experiments with what I want to do for the edges. And I think I'm just going to do a simple chamfer like this, just a 45 degree bevel along the edge. And I'll do that on all the boards, just on the front side. The back I will leave as a hard straight edge. Done. And now I've got some firewood, which is good because I've run out. Now because I've got so many runoff areas on the edges of these, because um, they're seconds, most of them are right on one side. So, but because of this, I'm going to have to cut it safer way, opposite of what I just cut the other ones. Which means I have to cut all of one side of each one, and then change the saw, and then flip them and run them all through again. Oh well. If you're wondering why I'm not using my homemade ripping saw to rip these boards, it's simply because it's holding up this table at the moment that I'm building. And I'm just recovering from the flu and I just don't have the energy to get it down because it weighs a ton. I really need another person to help me get it down. So, but I feel like doing some work, so that's why I am ripping these boards today on the old Makita MLT100. I just need to do that another 20 times, 18 times, and we'll be done. Ready for the next step. I'm going to be making up my frame with this 40 by 40 Vitex hardwood. Um, as you can see, it's seconds. 
but those two ones that are really rough looking there will be the top and bottom so one will have that on the bottom so the top will look alright and the other one will have that on the right up on the top where no one can see it either and it'll look like that so it's all good so those are the pieces I need there and these are the sizes the whole width of the thing is going to be 2050 and there will also be a board tacked on the end which will make it a little bit bigger but the frame is going to be 2050 by 1860 high I've got a little rebate the top and bottom and the supports this is only half of how long it would be it's not drawn to scale um, so I need to cut four uprights at 1800 um, having a 10 mil rebate into each um, top and bottom plate on the up all the uprights all four of them and I'll glue and screw those so let's get to it um, first of all I am going to cut all these rebate well I'll cut the boards to length and then cut all these rebates cut the rebates on the radial arm saw here and then I can glue and screw it all together six boards now cut so now I just need to check out the top and bottom plate these two longer ones here on the radial arm saw I'm gonna check in 40 mil from each end 10 mil deep that end that end and then there'll be two checkout bits 40 mil wide and 10 deep about 680 from each end for my middle supports and of these four that are left here, one will go on each end and two will go in the middle. With all my checkouts cut from my top and bottom board. I now need to drill some holes through these. Um, I'm putting four inch countersunk batten screws in, 14 gauge stainless 316. Um, and so I need to pre drill this because it's hardwood and it'll split like friggin' buggery about it. Another seven of them with this seven mil drill bit with a countersink on it, and we can screw it together. Now I hadn't noticed with this frame that this particular board, the one that I'm putting the hinges on, is actually a little bit thinner than the others. Didn't notice it while I was gluing it up, that was the bottom side, I thought it was flush, but no. And I was going to route out for my hinges, which will be sticking out sort of like so, to accommodate another board that's going to be on my post, and so that they can swing around without catching on anything. But they are now flush with that top board so I can't really recess them any further because where they are there is exactly where they should be top and bottom so I'm just gonna have to screw them on and hope they're strong enough recessing them into the timber makes it a lot stronger 
Now because I am screwing this on with these trim head camo decking screws which go through boards on this sort of angle through the edges so that they're not seen on the face they will go through sort of like that into the back boards so because I'm putting and using those screws to get to the bottom edge of the first couple of boards I need to do it before I attach my frame to my post so I'll check a couple of boards on for that and then I'll follow that with the hinges then I can put it up and screw all my other boards on so the first board I'll be putting on will be a Vitex board because I've got more of them and this one's rough as guts on the edge so I'm just going to use that up it's a bit, it's a bit rough but I'll put that right on the bottom and hopefully you won't see it so I've got to use this board here for my camo tool because I've only got the big tool for the wide boards but that should do it and I'll do all the bottom holes with that and the top ones I will drill and screw by hand Spread the leftover glue underneath this board as well. I won't be put on any of the other boards, but might as well use it up. The top of each board will be drilled and screwed manually, like so. end up doing the whole lot manually. So I'm going to rebate the hinges. I don't know what I was thinking, thinking about not rebating them. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to do that with the um, with the router, cordless router. So I'm going to have a hinge here, hinge here. You couldn't fucking see that, could you? So I got two hinges close together at the top. That gives it a lot more strength because everything's pulling, the weight's pulling down that way. So if you can have a couple of big hefty hinges at the top that's a lot better than evenly spreading them out so I got two at the top one at the bottom and one in the middle these are four inch two and a half mil thick stainless um, quite nice hinges actually got sort of bushings in there which turn independently to support so that they're under heavy loads they will still work so yeah I'm gonna rebate that now and chuck that on So with my hinges on, I've screwed a couple more boards on the bottom and it's almost ready to now put up in position. I had to put those bottom boards on because I wouldn't be able to get my drill in from underneath to screw the boards on otherwise. So the last thing to do before I put it up on my post is I'm going to make a, a stopper type thing here, foot, to go on the end so I don't wear this out. I'm not doing the wheel thing like I think I spoke about earlier so I'm gonna put a piece of nylon six this shit on here for it to just rest on keep it all level and straight when it swings around I'll have a block on the wall to hold it at the right height so I'm cutting a piece of nylon six here out of this old old piece that I had from a job from a previous life um, I'm gonna make it about that thick and just screw a small piece along here so I'll go finish cutting that out and screw that on it's hard as bloody hard as nails almost this nylon six stuff it's it's real good shit it's hard to cut my nylon foot nylon six foot a couple of countersunk holes in it deeply countersunk so the screws are right in there and they'll never ever scrape on the concrete that's never gonna wear out now the tricky bit, trying to stand it up by myself and get it in the right position to attach the hinges. Why is that screen tilting? Damn, auto freaking correct. With it now in position, I've got 16 holes to drill and tap. If 
Sun Sun Sun. Right, more boards. Look at all that shit behind there. I want to make that disappear. Just over halfway. Not on the video, on the screen. Don't worry, the video is nearly finished. Nearly there, but I've got a small issue coming up. So there's no problem at the top there. The gap's a bit too big. I'm going to have to put a wider bit of Vitex there, which is not a problem, I've got it. But I think it's going to rain shortly, so I'm going to quickly chuck some oil on these boards before they get wet. Oh yeah, she's looking good. Oh, she's looking grouse. Problem is, <laughs> the oil going on, the, the two different timbers now look like four different, four or five different bloody timbers. Anyway, such is life. I'm just going to work out how to do that top board, make a wider one. Now I'm going to finish it off. I'm going to put a, um, a board down this side, which will overlap stick out a little bit and have a rebate in it and it'll overlap these edge boards protect the edges and the top will be similar board and I've also got to of course do this bit down here so hopefully the weather holds off man it's getting windy so I've put another piece of Vitex on the top here and we've got this gap here but I'm gonna put a cap on here which is gonna be rebated out thicker Vitex 32 mil It'll hang down here a bit and then stick out. I'm going to let it intrude out, I don't know, 10, 15 mil as a sort of cover and then this won't get as wet for one thing. And there will also be a similar piece down here. I'm going to um, cut that out of this 180 wide by 32 mil piece of Vitex. Um, put the bevel on the edges. With my board cut in two, now comes the trick bit. So on here I am going to have it so that the board hangs over about, not much, 5mm, something like that, quarter of an inch sort of thing, um, over the front just to tidy up this edge and hold all these in place if they ever want to move. So it'll go along there, hang over the edge a little bit, so I've got to rebate all the back of it, cut out quite a lot of timber. And that will also make it fun when I get to the top here and I have to match this bit up. But what I'm going to do, I'm not going to mitre it or anything because it'll be pain in the ass with this sort of stupid shape I'm trying to do. So this will just butt up flush with the top and the other one will hang over the top of that one. That's the theory. Except the top one of course has to be rebated out too. Big chunk of timber got to be taken out here so that this one drops down and hangs over. I don't make my life easy, do I? That's good, finishes it off nicely. Real good. So along the top I'm going to do the same thing basically, but the board on the top is a little bit wider. So it's going to cover this hangover and just frame the whole thing nicely. Protect all these raw edges and stuff. So I need to do another check out like on this board, but it'll just be a bit bigger, a bit deeper and sticking out a bit further this way. Hey, trying to film pal. So I'll cut that now, um, I won't bother showing you, I mean, it's just the same as how I did this one. So I'll just cut it and we'll put it in place, there's going to be a real tricky bit just here. I'll see that in a minute. So with my top board cut, I now need to check this bit out of here. 
like that. I've marked it under here. And then this will slide across over the top and cap it. Hopefully I don't fork it up. So I was going to epoxy this board on in the top board just so there's no screws visible. Looks good on this side. That's exactly how I wanted it. So, so because it's got the oil down this side and it's still wet, I can't be bothered um, scraping it back and sanding it to try and get rid of it. Um, so I'm instead going to just screw it from this back side. Just sort of countersunk the screws in here using 50mm screws so they get into here. And that'll be that'll be a pretty good solution and there won't be any screws visible from the outside. The back here I'm not too worried about because already you know it looks funny. But once I oil this shouldn't be too bad. Cut out the back so no one sees it. So yeah, screw this one on and then chuck on the top. So my framing boards are on. I think it looks bloody crash hot. That overhanging like that looks looks good. It's all nicely framed. Still got to finish the, um, the post there, but the screen part of it is done. It's just a couple of boards there to hide the hinges and yeah, make that post disappear. Here's my end piece. Slight overhang, all routed. Not 100%, but too shabby. No screwed underneath for the top and down the side here for the end piece so I just slap some oil on that and that'll be me done for the day because it does look like it's gonna rain still in fact it looks worse than it did before so we get this done so there's my screen complete I've got my final board on Unfortunately, I screwed through the front just because it was the easiest thing to do at the time. But I used um, I used these small trim head nail uh, screws that I used on these boards, camo screws. So it's not too bad. So there she is. There's my block on the wall for holding it. Around the back here. Got a bit of scaffolding here because I'm doing some painting. Uh, squeeze around. Uh. So I've got a handle on the back. It's pretty simple. I just screw, uh, drilled a hole here and here, 20 mil hole. Get it in shot for crying out loud. 20 mil hole here and here. Slipped in this 19 mil, three quarter inch stainless tube. Put a screw in there just so it can't slide too far. And then. Can lift it like that, swing it around, place it on top of my block, and there it is open. So with it open like that I can get everything in and out just as before. I haven't, haven't put any oil on the back yet because I was running low on oil. And we can just Swing it round. It's now catching on the, um, the nylon foot there. And just lift it with the handle and get it back into the position I want. Done. Now, I'm also just have decided instead of just doing a short little wall there, I'm going to put it across this little block wall of the house, I've painted it black and I'll do a quick video on that that'll be up shortly thanks for watching please like, subscribe, comment etc I'll see you on the next one